In this video, we'll talk about the concepts around setting up connections and credentials so we can access them in our integrations. Let's start with some basic terminology to lay the foundation. A connection specifies how the integration will connect with the system. It consists of an address or endpoint with a protocol. When we're connecting to a database, it will also include the details about making that connection, like the database name, schema, database user, and so on. A credential is the authentication data required to make the connection. For example, a username and password. An alias is a naming convention that ties together the connections and credentials. Aliases are reusable, so we don't have to enter the same information for multiple integrations. We can simply use an alias. Additionally, we can use the same alias in our dev instance to make a connection to a third-party dev system, and when we promote our work to production, the same alias can be used by simply providing a new production connection and credential. All integrations using that alias will simply work. There are two different types of aliases on the Now platform. The first is a credential alias. This associates the credential data only and resolves during runtime. The second is a connection and credential alias and also resolves during runtime, but as the name suggests, it associates the connection and credential information needed for the integration. Okay, let's take a look at a connection and credential alias. This may be provided as part of an existing app or integration we got from the store, partner, or coworker. We may also build out our own aliases in subprod instances. An example of where this is used is in an integration hub action. Let's take a look at a diagram that might help map some of this out, and then we'll come back and look at some examples. When we specify the alias, it makes the connection and credential information available to our action. For example, in a REST step. The green color implies that this information is part of an application or integration. It becomes part of the app repo, update set, and so on. And as the name implies, it's an alias for more specific information about the credential and connection. The connection record is in a related list to the alias. The connection also has a reference field to the credential record. This could be an API key, basic authentication, OAuth information, and so on. In the case of a basic authentication, a single record with a username and password are available. For an API key, it's even simpler. Only an API key is required. These are obtained from the third-party service where we're connecting to and managed there as well. However, for OAuth 2.0, things get a little bit more complicated. Let's take a look at where ServiceNow stores that information, and later we'll go through the implementation. The credentials start at a table aptly named OAuth 2.0 Credentials. The meaningful part of this record is the reference field to the table OAuth Entity Profile. The OAuth Entity Profile contains a reference field to an OAuth Provider. The Provider record tells OAuth all the details of how to manage the authentication token, as well as the all-important Client ID and Client Secret fields. Think of these kind of like a username and password. Like the API key earlier, they're managed by a third-party service, typically from a security or credentials page. The OAuth Entity Profile also has the related list of profile scopes. Scopes tell OAuth what that particular account has access to. For example, read-only access to Google Contacts, but not email. Or being able to get stats from LinkedIn, but not post any information. The naming of the scopes is very specific, so be sure to double-check what the remote service is offering when entering information. The way scopes are created and maintained in ServiceNow may be a little confusing at first, so let's take a closer look. Here is the list of all available scopes in the OAuth Entity Scopes table. Normally, we wouldn't access this directly, as it appears in the embedded list to the OAuth Provider form. So we'll enter the scopes on the OAuth Provider screen as string fields. Typically, the name and the scope are the same for easier data entry and avoiding confusion later. When we save the form, it creates the necessary entries in OAuth Entity Scope. Now we come back to the OAuth Entity Profile record. 
It has the embedded list of scopes also. However, the OAuth entity scope here is a reference field, which comes from, that's right, the OAuth entity scope table. This will make more sense when we go through the demo. There's one more table worth noting when dealing with credentials, and that's the OAuth credential table, where the tokens are stored. If we should ever need to inspect or reset an OAuth token, we can find them under System OAuth Manage Tokens. Connections, credentials, and aliases are really useful. They provide a central location to manage credentials for external services. They're reusable across multiple platform features. They can be used in Flow Designer, Integration Hub, Cloud Management, Discovery, Orchestration, and even Service Mapping. They minimize configuration on the other platform features, and they allow non-administrators to use predefined connections and credentials without revealing the details, which in turn increases security. Now, just as a friendly reminder, remember that we'll need to create new connection and credential records in each instance we use. Only the aliases are brought along with update sets and repo and that kind of thing. And that's a good thing because they're unique and we wouldn't want to be exposing or advertising them in a GitHub repo, for example. Now that we've covered the basics, let's move on to the next video and look at a simple example.